so good, even when they face big deficits, to, to be able to come back. I mean, Jimbo's 10-9 and nine in a game that he's trailed by 10 points, which is kind of crazy. Um, no, I think it's funny to say that because we, we talk about it all the time. Like, why can't we just come out there and just start like that, you know, and, uh -huh. and just make and put it into it quickly? But it's funny. I, I think it's because like we just like, we all we got grit. You know what I'm saying? Like we don't want to lose nobody. It's kind of like come out there a little slow, and, and, and then it's like, damn, we don't want to lose. What are we doing? Let's like, and we turn off just like that. You know what I'm yeah. saying? I think it also has something to do with what they practice, though. You know what I'm saying? Because we practice, the beginning of practice is, I mean, it's rough. We get tired, you know, mm -hmm. but we flip that switch midway through practice even more and hit that nitrous button, like Coach, Coach Fisher says, and we finish the end of practice even harder than it was at the beginning. So I feel like once we get in that game, we, we might get down a little like that, but, I mean, we're just starting, you know, so we can keep going because that's we, we pride ourselves on being conditioned and being, you know, able to keep going and keep pushing, having a good tempo and not get too tired because mm -hmm. when the other team starts to get tired, that's when we take advantage of them and start to do what we got to do. Is there a way to, um, I guess, I don't want to say prevent the 2014 because you guys ended up going undefeated in the regular season, but mm -hmm. is there something you guys can do to prevent 2014 where you have to have all these types of comebacks? Yeah, I definitely think that it has to do with, I think that in the first half we played a little bit of dumb football. Mm -hmm. By that I mean I had a couple, I had two penalties that were stupid, uh, whether they're my fault or not, I know, um, and then a couple guys had the false starts and just playing dumb football. We're moving the ball in the field, and then we do something stupid to get you know taken back, mm -hmm. or we start out with great field position, get a penalty, and then great field position turns to us on the other side of the 50-yard line. So I feel like if we really can come out in these next games and, and really eliminate the stupid football and just play smart ball like we did in the second half and really come out there and fire the ball and do our assignments, you know, get the quarterback time, get the ball to receivers, get the running back time to find the hole, defense comes out and does their thing, I mm -hmm. think that we're going to come out and we're going to hit teams in the mouth in the first the first play, and it's going to be a ball rolling from there, <laughs> and it's just going to get it's, it's going to start looking good. So, so I think it was you who said in preseason camp, was looking back at all those films of FSU teams, you wanted to be like head cracker. So mm -hmm. what was it about that first half in your mind that kind of lacked it, but what do you think it was you guys did in the third quarter that really set that tone in a sense? I just feel like guys were, I feel like people were, I hate to say the nervous jitters, but like, like Coach said, I feel like some guys, you know, had nervous jitters. I'm not gonna say DeAndre. I think DeAndre played great. I think he came out there ready to play. I honestly think that it was some of the older guys. I think they were more nervous than he was because I, I felt like I, I talked to DeAndre that before the game, and he was like, "Yo, man, trust. That's all we gotta do is trust, and we're gonna ball out." And I was like, "All right, you got me. Like, I'm trusting you. Trust me, and we're good to go." So I feel like some guys were just a little bit nervous, um, but I. Could, I, that second half of that game, I don't know, you watch that film, <laughs> I, I think it started to look like those teams I was talking about. I know my mentality going in that game was, I'm going to go out there and I'm going to go head first and I'm going to go balls to the wall. Like, that, that's how I know football. You know, I play football like that. I play, like, I want to play hard-nosed, gritty football. And so that's what I was trying to do and I was trying to get that mentality across. At halftime, I was, that was my thing to the guys around me. I was like, look, let's go out there and work. We worked our butts off all summer, worked our butts off all camp, all last spring to be this hard-nosed football team that gets after people's tails. That's what we need to do. We have to go do our jobs. And I felt like that's why we did that. I'm now, we, now, we talk about that speech. I mean, it's one thing to talk about it now, but assuming you had a chance to watch it last night, did you kind of see yourself and go, <coughs> is that really me? That that's what I really say? Or, or, or? I, that's really weird. <laughs> it was really weird watching that stuff. And was, I was on there a few times, and I was like, man, that's me. Um, that's me on the TV right there. <laughs> Whole country saying that, but I mean, I, I knew I said some. Yeah, apparently from Illinois, not Virginia. We gave the uh, producer a little bit of uh, our time about that. Me and Mark did. Um, he said he's gonna fix it next time. But uh, yeah, I mean that was a little weird. But I mean, I definitely knew I was. I mean, I was mad. I was real mad during halftime because I was like, I knew we were a better team than that. I watched this team. I'm like, I watched most of camp. And I was out, so I watched camp and I watched that team. And I knew we were better than that, and I knew I was better when I was doing. It, so I had to do my job as a leader. And get the guys going. You know what I'm saying? The leader's not going to blame on other guys and take the responsibility himself and get the guys around him up and ready to go. So I feel like the biggest thing was just, just to tell the guys, like, this is our job. This is what we do. Let's go out there and do our job right and do this job the hard way, which is getting after people. Al, you just said you pride yourself on being a, a gritty, hard nosed player. You're in the trenches every, uh, every play. Not that DeAndre obviously didn't do this, but if a quarterback was to kind of flinch and maybe not stand in the pocket and take those hits and deliver the ball, would you? I don't know if judge is the right word. Would you be kind of judge judge a quarterback a little bit if he wasn't willing to? to I mean, I'm be honest. Ways. No one wants to stand there and get hit. Yeah. But um, I I don't know. You know, it's just I've never been in that situation because I think at Florida State, we're surrounded by quarterbacks that they're going to go hard nose. <laughs> they're going to get hit. They get hit. They get hit. They're never going to quit. You know mm. what I'm saying? I know y'all. Sorry, go ahead. I know y'all are close. How was it playing alongside Rick for the first time on the offensive line? <laughs> it was pretty funny. I came back on the back block, and Rick came down. Uh, it was like a power play. I came back to cut back to on the back. 
and Rick came to cut him off at the same time, like we were supposed to. And we both locked on to that defensive end. And we, we, look, I, we glanced at each other and started <laughs> laughing. We just started driving the dude back. He says, awesome, you know, that's my buddy. So it's good to be out there. And I, I talked to him at halftime, too. And I was like, because, you know, he was trying to get down himself a little bit because it's his first game ever playing off the line. And I was like, look, man, you're here for a reason. You're on that field for a reason. Just listen to Coach Strickett, do what he says. Don't get down. Just go out there with the head high. It's a new game in the second half. Just go out there and play balls to the wall, and you're going to do fine. I think he had an awesome second half, personally. What does it say about him as a football player to go from a defensive lineman to the starting right tackle in about a six month? I just think, it's, uh, I think it shows that he's all, he is a football player. I mean, a, a real true football player, you could take him and change his position and say, look, you're going to do this, 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 and this. He's going to listen to you. He's going to fix it, listen to his coach, and go out there and do his job. And I think he did. I think he's getting better every day. I think that he did good for it to be his first game. I think that the limits for him are endless. I, I see him ending the season as one of the best tackles in, in the conference. So are you guys laughing during the push? Oh, yeah. We were getting after it. We were getting after that, dude. Uh, I, number, I don't even know who it was. It was Demon's Man. We were getting after it. We were like, oh, this guy's going back. <laughs> so we, we, we would laugh about it. Over summer, we were talking about, man, I can't wait to end up on the same block and we just get after it together, you know what I'm saying? Because that's my boy. But, I mean, it's awesome, all the guys around me, you know, we get together, we get to hit people, block people, do our jobs. It's fun for us, you know. When you start, like Coach Trigger says, when you start beating up the guy in front of you, that's when it's fun. It's not fun when he's beating you, but if you start pushing him back and making his life miserable, you guys are going to have fun together. And we had fun that second half. I mean, it was a different sideline after the second half. The first half, I felt like guys were down. We were getting that deficit going, and I was told everybody, look, don't get your heads down. It's the worst thing we can do. And we came out that second half, and we went down the field, got that field goal. We should have scored a touchdown, but it's all good. Um, if we scored a touchdown, that would have been awesome. We got the field goal. We got points. It's all that mattered. And then the sideline just erupted. From then on, we knew we were coming back. I mean, I'm telling you, that field goal happened. We knew we were coming back from right then, and it was just a different different feel. Everybody was having fun. We were just doing our job. A few more. I know you've been involved in a lot of games at this program. This program's been a lot of, involved in a lot of big games, but has there ever been one maybe this emotionally draining where, you know, one minute it's the world is over, go home, the next minute you want to stay out and still play ball? I mean, what's that like to be a part of something? I mean, the only game I can compare this to, um, because I went, I mean, not necessarily score wise, but the way the game went, you know, it took us a little bit longer to get going. And then when we got going, it was like we were, we were going, was Florida game. I feel like Florida game, we started off a little bit slower, then we started capitalizing, started really getting after it. And so far in my career, the Florida game and the Ole Miss game are the most fun games to me ever. I mean, oh, this Ole Miss game, to, to get down by that much, had the biggest comeback in school history, that means so much as a team and as a player, just knowing I was part of history, but also knowing that my team's not going to give up. No matter what happens, we're not going to give up. We're going to keep going and try to win the game. That Florida game, though, was at the end of the season. Now you've had an emotional game in five days to prepare for a new opponent. So how ch how challenging is that? Well, I mean, it's definitely challenging. You know, knowing we have a game in a couple of days. That game's what less than seventy two hours away now. But the thing is, is going through a situation like that at the beginning of the season, getting down and you know really testing our team. That tested our testing with fortitude, and that showed our team's got guts. Our, our team's got grit, and we're not scared of nobody. Even if we get down, we're still going to fight back. So I think that that happening at the beginning of the season. It's going to make us stronger going into the year, knowing that, okay, we can get down, but we don't, want, we don't want to start down. We can start quick like we did in the second half and put teams way fast like that. It's going to make our lives easier, and we know we're capable of doing it against some of the top teams in the country and if we can do it to Ole Miss. When you went down 28-6, to six, what was Francois' message in the huddle when you guys came back out? He, was, he stayed poised the entire time. You know? He said, all right, guys, let's go to do our job. He was like, everybody get them going. You got fire, let's go. Let's get this fire going. Let's get it going. And he really kept his poise and really just did his job. He's, I mean, that kid's a, he's a true leader. He's, he's, he knows what he's doing. He really likes being out there. and he's, It's awesome to play with him. You came, sorry, you, you came and picked him up after that touchdown pass. Just how impressive was it that he got that pass off? And what did you see in him in that moment? Well, first of all, I saw him on the ground. And I was like, oh, that's not good. Then I was like, <laughs> I got up in his ear. And I was like, you good? And he goes, yeah. And he go, we scored. And he goes, Okay, and then I grabbed him, picked him <laughs> up. And then, I mean, it was awesome. And he, he got hit all night long, but he kept getting up. He, it reminded me of Sean. I, I, Sean's one of the toughest quarterbacks I've known. And I've seen Sean take some hits, and he always, he always gets back up. You know, DeAndre's tough, just like Sean. I mean, he gets hit, but he, oh, that's, I want to eliminate. We need to eliminate the hits. But to know that he's that tough is awesome. And then we put it back back there. It's not scared of nobody. It's just awesome to play like that. Okay. Real question, how were your DMs last night, man? My DMs? Yeah. Oh, my, my Snapchat was <laughs> obliterated <laughs> by messages last night. And then all my friends back home was like, oh, apparently they're from Illinois now. I'm like, oh, well, sorry. <laughs>